Hello, my name is Kirill Chepishka. I'm a 3D artist and in this tutorial we're going to be talking about preparing the CAD model for Keyshot and using Keyshot plugin for Fusion 360. As you can see I have already prepared the watch model. Uh, I modeled this specifically for the tutorial and uh, I have already organized my uh, body in, in like I guess uh, the folder structure in this case in, in case of fusion it's components but I kind of look at them as folders and I have already assigned the materials to make it easier to assign materials in Keyshot when we transfer it so let's just talk about the steps I've taken uh, to get here uh, as you can see I have separated everything just using kind of like the real life logic. Uh, I'm separating uh, glass into its own thing. There's a crown, all the hands are separate and uh, they are sitting in their own components right here uh, as individual bodies. I haven't uh, merged anything uh, because I still want that flexibility when I'm transferring the model over um, and uh, I can just show you real quick how I went about assigning the materials just in case uh, you're new to this or you haven't done that. Uh, I think it's pretty easy. Uh, you need to start with clicking on a face because um, it won't work with clicking on a an edge. And we choose the appearance and the little appearance window pops up with uh, in this design all the materials that I'm using already plus uh, a little bit of a library here with uh, all other materials and uh, not all of them are available right away uh, inside of Fusion 360 some of them you will need to download but to be honest uh, it's not really that important what kind of materials you're using here because uh, they don't transfer over directly but it's good to see roughly um, uh, the representation of, of how it's going to look. Uh, so for example if I wanted the body of the watch and we can also find it here uh, so this would be the body of the watch uh, if I wanted it to be uh, let's say a different color all we need to do, let's say we want this metal flake which is gonna download that material, it takes just a second and uh, in the apply to option uh, we need to keep it at bodies and components rather than faces and we're gonna talk about that in a second so I'm just gonna go ahead and drag and drop it here remove the existing appearance and uh, it has replaced uh, my material with uh, this appearance uh, there's a difference in fusion uh, between uh, physical materials and appearances uh, meaning uh, physical materials are, it's, it are, are used for calculating actual physical properties inside Fusion which we don't have to worry about so we're just going to be looking with appearances uh, and uh, if I wanted to edit this material further let's say it's clashing with an existing one and I just want it to look a little different and if I don't see the color uh, that I need I'm just gonna right click here go into edit and uh, not only I can edit uh, the color I can also adjust the scale of uh, flakes because it has uh, a little bit of texture on it Be uh, because uh, all of this exists because you can do uh, rendering inside of Fusion 360 but uh, in our case we're talking about transferring that over uh, so you can also adjust roughness on that material and we're gonna we're not gonna go with uh, blue we're just gonna keep it like metallic um, and um, all kinds of properties you can adjust here shouldn't really matter uh, for transferring to Keyshot what matters is having them different and the way I like to prepare the model so having them different meaning uh, 
um, you know, old gold pieces will be gold, old metal pieces will be metal. Um, this uh, leather strap, for example, uh, I have a model of the leather strap uh, that uh, we also did specifically for this tutorial. Uh, so I'm going to replace that inside Keyshot, but for now it, it was just kind of like a block out that I used. Um, so yeah, so what matters is keeping them separate because they are going to be transferred into Keyshot as separate materials. Um, and uh, of course organizing um, everything so that it's easier to use, drag and drop, and uh, preserve through the Keyshot plugin you will be able to preserve the structure of the files. So uh, let's talk about the uh, first, we're going to talk about the uh, Keyshot um, plugin in a second. Um, and I promised to tell you about the editing uh, faces separately, so let's quickly get back to that. Uh, when you're assigning materials, you can not only assign them to whole bodies like this, uh, let's use this uh, green material as an example. Uh, so not only you can drag and drop onto the bodies by removing the previous one, but if you choose faces, you can also assign those material to individual faces, which is uh, pretty useful because uh, obviously the CAD software uh, builds the volume and, and represents the 3D model like in 3D space um, in its own way um, as opposed to a polygonal. So if we wanted to assign this yellow material to a face, we can just drag and drop it onto a face and it would be transferred into Keyshot the way we see it. So for example, something like that, which you would not need to do anything special um, inside of Keyshot for this. Sometimes you need to zoom in closer to get access to that face. Uh, it would be transferred as is, uh, but uh, we also, in the next part, we're going to talk about editing the geometry inside Keyshot separately. Um, but it wouldn't, you know, it would be a, um, you know, a hassle to do that there, uh, specifically in this case. So sometimes I use this to highlight certain features or to get a better control over the model. Uh, as you can see, in this model. I have all the little fillets running along the edges here and uh, normally you wouldn't need to model them but this is uh, kind of a small model and I'm planning to do a lot of close-ups so I wanted these uh, tiny edge details to be uh, present physically versus uh, a shader option in Keyshot so that's that's the reason I modeled them out but if I wanted to gain even more control over these edges specifically, um, I wouldn't need to assign them, uh, you know, like a particular material, but I would need to tell uh, the Keyshot plugin that these edges have a different material on them. So if I really wanted the control inside a Keyshot on that to get a better reflection or to uh, manually highlight an edge, I would just take a random material and go through selecting all these faces and you can also just uh, hold down control when selecting faces and, and go through selecting all of them and assigning the material there um, and then you know if you just uh, if you made a mistake or you need to go back you can always drag and drop uh, you well you switch to the bodies and components mode and you drag and drop it here and it will ask to remove the previous assignments of the appearance. So this is what we're going to do. Um, and you could also drag and drop it into the browser here if you're having trouble selecting it in the viewport. So you can just, we can use that yellow as an example. So that also works. And I'm going to just control Z out of it. And then if 
later for some reason I wanted to edit that I just go back to appearance find that material just make it look nice so uh, this would be uh, just preparing your model assigning all kinds of as long as the materials are different they will be transferred as sort of separate groups into Keyshot they don't have to be realistic uh, or uh, the ones that you're going to be using they just need to be uh, individual uh, and then normally I would go about this um, by saving out or by exporting um, in the um, step format which would pres preserve everything and uh, I would save that and uh, later when I open Keyshot would just drag and drop it but uh, in our case uh, I wanted to show you how to get the Keyshot plugin and I use that to speed up the process uh, so with just one click it will open Keyshot and it will start transferring the model and uh, it will keep the link alive which is super important uh, we're gonna take a look at that in a second but um, to, to get that plugin you can either go to the store uh, manually or you can just switch to tools uh, go to add-ins and uh, go to Fusion 360 App Store right here it will take the browser window and we go here and we just uh, type in Keyshot um, and uh, you can see the plugin is a little bit behind in terms of versions but it still works so what you would need to do is uh, just take this Keyshot 6 plugin and it will still work and uh, make sure you select the right OS uh, which in my case would be Windows 64 and uh, you can just download and install it so that should take care of installing and when you relaunch uh, your Fusion 360 app you will see a button right here so when we click that button it's gonna pick up Keyshot and um, it might take a second to transfer the data but yes the important part is that it's keeping everything alive uh, the link so that if I needed to edit anything uh, I could just go back to fusion let's say I'm uh, like adding a little cube right here and then I would need to click that keyshot button again and switch back to Keyshot it updates the data and you can see the cube is here and um, when we go back just like I was showing you before about assigning materials to individual faces uh, we can just assign them here and that update would also work so just click the button again switch to Keyshot and you can see Keyshot assigns like random materials or tries its best to match but as long as they're separate or, and, and different we can work with that and it will be identified as an individual material uh, the only thing we need to do here now is you can see what it, when it, it imported the model it's sitting on the ground level here so we just need to do a quick adjustment I'm gonna select the whole thing click move and say snap to ground so that, it's, so that it's sitting above the ground and um, I also need to and you can see like it's all white for now but it's definitely separate there and if I hide the glass you can see that all of that is here so I can at least start working with the shaders and assigning individual uh, materials here but uh, one more thing I need to do before we uh, go forward with this is I need to replace the strap uh, and I'm gonna do that by importing it and adjusting and matching the size um, so 
actually, first of all, let's delete this cube because we don't need it. Send the update back to Keyshot. And then we're going to go ahead and click Import. Import the strap. And uh, on the Import dialog, we just need to say Add to Scene. Uh, we can keep everything as is, Center Geometry and Snap to Ground, because we can manually adjust that. And um, um, we don't need to worry about the geometry units. If you know, you know. And maybe you're lucky and it will import correctly. But I'm pretty sure that this one doesn't import correctly, so uh, I'm going to show you what to do and how to adjust it. Uh, the important thing is keeping the parts individual and structure the scene by object because there's going to be no material. The strap is coming, it's, uh, it was modeled in ZBrush, so it's coming in as an OBJ. And we're going to go ahead and click Import. So that's going to take a while. I'm going to pause it for a second. And it's about to be done. Um, it's just creating all those individual groups, and because this strap is, uh, um, it's a pretty big file, so it breaks everything down. And um, I also uh, didn't make any adjustments to have an opportunity to show you uh, that if there's like a million objects and they're all being imported as individual objects into Keyshot. Um, we can just uh, link all those materials together uh, so that we don't have to go manually through assigning the materials. So you can see that it imported the strap and uh, it's definitely the wrong size. And before we take care of that, um, we just need to merge the materials. Because um, I think it's going to be broken down. We'll see. Let's adjust the size first. Uh, so this was the import. Go back in the root. The, this is a new model set, Merch Strap, uh, and we can just add a couple of zeros to the scale and see which one fits best. Yeah, it sounds like I was off by a decimal point. And then we're just going to move it into place. Uh, snap to the ground and adjust it. Something like that and we're gonna hide uh, the block out of the strap because we're not gonna need that anymore. Actually I'm gonna go ahead and delete those parts. And also to make everything uh, working smooth and keeping things quick and uh, convenient, um, while I'm assigning all the materials and just doing all the basic work, uh, preparing the watch, uh, I like to stay in the performance mode so that you know it doesn't uh, load the CPU or you know no unnecessary lag. So this is uh, ready now. And uh, in the next part, we're going to talk about editing geometry inside a key shot.